All right, hello and welcome to the course guide for the management wheel. As you can see, a lot of this has been laid out for each course in the wheel. We've decided to put all three course guides together in one place since everything builds up to your final project. So if you've done some of the other wheels here, you might see, this might seem familiar to you. Uh, essentially, parts of it are scattered out through the courses as you're doing each piece of your final project, and then the final project kind of goes over the same issues again. And the reason that I like to create these course guides is that there's an awful lot that we have here at the library, and the course guide allows me to narrow it down to just what you're going to need most likely for your project. Some of it you're going to have to go outside, especially when you're doing your literature review and things like that, but we'll get to that. So some of this, as you can see, is taken straight from your course syllabus. Part of the requirements for this course is that you're going to be able to use the databases contained in the library. This is me conducting a brief in-class training, quote unquote, for those of you who will be able to see it or for those of you who might miss it. And I'm also going to try to come into the course at some time this semester and go over the same things for the most part and answer some questions. So you've got my contact information over here, an email. Uh, this is the chat. It shows up when I'm actually online, the same as the LibChat. Uh, on the front page of the library. And you can also schedule an appointment with me if you like, and we can use WebEx, whatever works for you. So, Wall Street Journal, here's a direct link straight to the journal. Your assignment for the Wall Street Journal is gonna be in the third week, so it's there, it's ready to go. Articles from the databases, these are ones that are the most used based on our statistics. So these are the ones students tend to gravitate toward, faculty tend to gravitate toward. So once you've selected your topic for your trimester project, then you're going to start accumulating resources. And in order to do that, you're going to have to show that you can navigate these databases to some extent. You'll have your theorist presentation. Credo reference is a good place to start when you're looking for things like definitions, encyclopedia entries, and biography information. I really like it when I'm starting off any kind of research and you're still kind of playing around with the topic, you're still not quite sure, you don't have a grip around something, just jump into Credo and I find that is a lot easier and you can get a short summary encyclopedia definition of what you're working on and that's extremely helpful. As you see, Wikipedia may not be used, so you have to use actual encyclopedias, but the format's not that different. These tutorials from Microsoft are actually really good. I absolutely recommend them. And then the 10 PowerPoint tips are, you know, how to keep things interesting. And then here's the regular Ask a Librarian, chat with a librarian. If we're on, um, you can, if you're on your phone, just hit the text and Ask a Librarian. This is the form that will show up. And the first librarian to grab it will answer. So let's go into 4400. Continue to regularly read the Wall Street Journal. So there it is to remind you. Here's some stuff from the Johnson School of Business Guide to Writing and some word tutorials. If you're not that confident with using Word right now, these again, these tutorials from Microsoft are really good. Uh, you could basically learn everything you need to know in these, they do two or three minute videos that you can go through. Same for Excel, by the way, if you're gonna be using that in some other classes. And so here's some information on employment at will, law references and resources and finding the law. So when you're looking for legal references in this course, here's going to be some of the first places that you start searching. And there's a little bit underneath explaining what each resource is and how to use it. Again, if you have any trouble, don't spend too much time banging your head against the wall. Just go back to that first page and contact me or put something in Ask a Librarian and someone will be able to help you. So here's the final part. The literature review bit might change because we're working on um, an independent guide right now for literature review, so it'd be its whole guide on all the aspects of it, but that's what we have in there for now. Searching for management problems, here are the databases you're most likely going to use. The case study PowerPoint, week five, again, tutorials, tips, and then credo reference books again, because you're going to have to be supported by the theories from the texts that you've talked about, so again, good for theories. Gale Virtual Reference Library is similar to credo. And then when we get to the final project, You've got the different phases, different aspects of the phases. The perceived management problem, I basically broke a lot of this down uh, into different pieces. When you're going to be doing your references, here's your APA guide. So you just go in there. Here's a, a couple template papers. So if you, you don't have to worry about formatting it, just grab it and use that. And then when you're doing your citations, citation foxes where you should go. 
I just want to show this off for a little bit because say you've got something from a business article and it's not a journal and it's not a book so go into online and see what you find so say you found just a report in a database well there's nothing in here really for report you can check miscellaneous TV no it's not really it either lecture or speech no it's not a data set a data set's a little more like a set of fields in an Excel sheet it's not legal material although if you do need to start citing these things here they are uh, so really the only thing you can do is just go as general as possible and go with a web page so if you've got the author if there's multiple authors and probably most likely going to be a corporate author so you would show an example there's the general form there are some examples pretty straightforward so that's a really good tool I hope you learn to use it simply because I use it all the time because I mean, why bother memorizing all these things and all the certain aspects of each rule when you can just say mm, here's what I'm working on I don't have a DOI it's multiple authors okay I got it so you know save yourself the trouble don't overthink it there's an APA game there for uh, that you can go through and kind of see which aspects you might be a little weak on so then you'll get a question so you have to fix the citation. Which part's incorrect? Uh-oh. Uh what did I get wrong? Ah. So yeah. It's a fun game. You should keep playing it. Um, it's going to remind you of all these little things. So that's the APA guide. It's in your guide, so you don't forget about it. There's also some stuff on writing. These videos um, are pretty good about just the writing process. And a lot of this is subject to change as the semester goes on. Uh, this is a new guide, and so I'm waiting for your feedback and your professor's feedback. So again, the literature review, some of that might change. And then just for your convenience, I've put the research project instructions just at the bottom. It goes on for a while, but that's why it's at the bottom. So you can go through and remember which each part of it, which each section is, you know, which numbers of each sections are supposed to be. This APA template is not referring to our APA template. This is, I believe, referring to the template program in uh, Word. So just so you know, I think I have gotten that question before. Now, ours is just a very basic, here's how it's formatted. It'll look no different, just saves you the time. Especially, like I said, if you're not that confident with Word. But again, that's, that's why we put those technology help items in there for you. So there's a couple other things I want to go over. Uh, here's the front page of the library. If you ever need to know our hours, our hours are always up to date. If you want to know what's going on in the library, um, this gets updated regularly, the scroller here. If you need to reserve a study room, of course, Fort Myers, Naples, you can default to three hours a day. And if you need more, just immediately tell the librarian and we can give you a longer stay. The Ask Librarian is on the front page as well. There's a slide out chat and of course we're running a scavenger hunt right now this might be out of date by the time the video goes out but I want to point out a couple things one is the technology help so if you're ever having problems with uh, computer skills uh, Microsoft Office is a good one so here's all these tutorials I was talking about Here's how to use the virtual lab. So if you don't have it installed at home, uh, you can use the online version. So it won't install it, but this is the version that IT can give you support with. And then of course there's the Office 365, which you can download, but IT cannot give you assistance with it. It's just something that Microsoft gives you because we are a Microsoft using institution, but IT has no way to actually troubleshoot those issues. Uh, Blackboard, they do. So here's um, more on Blackboard. And if you're really feeling uncomfortable with your computer skills, there's a whole guide, uh, including a video just like this one that's going through how to use the guide. And it goes pretty much as basic as you can go. If there's any aspect about a new operating system you're worried about, about Office, it's pared down, it's straightforward as possible, and at the end of this, the tutoring page. So if you need to make a request for help with using a computer, there it is. So there's one more thing I wanted to go over before I finish, which is a resource guide that was put together by me surveying the English instruction faculty. 
So this is called the Research Readiness Guide, and if you know, maybe you might have gone over this in like grammar school or high school or something, uh, the uh, five aspects of writing, so preparing, organizing, drafting, reviewing, or rewriting, final revising. It's, it's phrased different ways. This is just the way I phrased it. I didn't do that intentionally. It just kind of came out that way. And here's what each of those mean. So that goes down again. You can contact me. And this goes through pretty much every aspect of writing. And I can't emphasize the importance of preparing enough. Read the assignment details carefully. Make sure you've got your background knowledge. Here's Credo again. Here's the GVRL again. Developing your ideas. Quick video on doing that. Reading like a college student. Don't spend too much time uh, banging your head against the wall. Sometimes you need to say, this isn't what I'm looking for, and drop the article. A lot of times you find an article and you think, oh, this is the article I need, and you start reading it, and it isn't. That's why I always say when you're going through and you're grabbing your articles, just grab as many as possible, and then you don't feel so bad about dropping one if it's not working for you. And then organizing. So mind mapping, pre-writing, structure. These are things that go from the very basic of learning writing to the pros. It never goes away. You're always going to be doing pre preparation and organizing, really, before you should even start trying to draft anything. Uh, if you would like, you can definitely make an appointment with me. We can go over this. Um, we can work on a particular assignment, or we can just go over the methodology. But it's really important. I can't stress it enough. And it's something that's going to fit into every aspect of your college education and beyond. Because you know, if you need to start taking down notes, for instance, while someone is talking, and then you start making these bullet points, you reorganize it, and you go, okay, you start expanding those bullet points, start filling it out, and say, now I'm ready to start writing. And here's some tips on writing. Go straight through. Don't slow down. Don't let yourself lose momentum. And then what do you do with the reviewing? And so there's also additional resources in here, and you play around with that. But I did want to mention that because you are going to be doing a literature review. In the literature review itself, you'll have to go through these stages preparing it, organizing it, and drafting it, and then your overall final paper, you'll have to prepare, organize, draft, review, and revise. So that's everything that you're really going to need to focus on for this course, and of course, anytime uh, you need to ask a question, we're available. Even on the weekends, we have a pretty good response time. Uh, I believe it was 10 minutes for the past year uh, was the average, and that includes weekends when the library isn't even open and 9 a.m. to 9.50 p.m. and 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Fridays, uh, we're on chat. We're available. So please don't hesitate to contact us, and I hope to see you in the library soon. Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. It lets us know that we're growing an audience and will allow us to continue making more material for you. If you'd like to contact us to learn more about Hodges University and our library, Visit us at the link in the top right.